What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Apollo. Um, I'm here doing my review for Arkham Origins. Usually I do written reviews for IGN and put my video reviews on YouTube. But this week I have to change things up a bit, seeing as I have absolutely no time. But I will be doing a written review of uh, the Batman Vita game, uh, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, later on this week. Uh, but yeah, on to my review of Arkham Origins. Uh, it's it's a it's a very good game. Uh, it's not in the hands of Rocksteady, who developed uh, Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. It's in the hands of WB Montreal, um, and it's you know it's not the origin story of Batman or Arkham. Well, actually, Arkham kind of. But uh, yeah, this is gonna be. I'll make it this as spoiler free as I can. Um, yeah, the game is basically this is two years into Batman's uh, career. Black Mask has, aka Roman Sionis, has put a hit on Batman, uh, and eight assassins have come to town to claim the fifty million dollar bounty on his head. Um, so you got, you know, you got a lot of different assassins, including Deathstroke, uh, Deadshot, Firefly, and a bunch of others that uh, have either been shown or that I'm just not gonna spoil. But yeah, it's a great game. It's cool to see uh, Bruce Wayne is he's he's mu he's only two years into his career, so he's he, you know, he's still very efficient, still obviously very intelligent and very effective as Batman, but he's much, he's very, un, he's unfocused, you know, compared to the Batman we see in Arkham Asylum and City, you know, in his, in his, where he's much further into his career. Here he's, you know, he's very angry. We see a very angry uh, Bruce Wayne. He's sort of not necessarily as concerned with keeping his identity a secret. I mean, he keeps his identity a secret, but in the small parts you see him as Bruce Wayne on, on television and, and stuff, he's not uh, hes not particularly tactful <laughs> like he is in his later years. Um, yeah, and you get to see conflict between him and Alfred, who, Alfred, you know, he doesn't support Bruce Wayne being Batman yet. He's not, he's not really on his side, so to speak, in that respect yet. So it's really cool to see the conflict between that. Um, and there's a lot of characters, a lot of great character interactions, uh, sort of preludes of things to come in the future as well, um, of characters that I just absolutely will not spoil, both villains and allies, and there's some really great moments. I mean, ultimately, that's what this game was for me. It, it was it was just seeing those first interactions with these characters that we know where their stories are going to go, but to see them, like, Batman's interaction with these characters, his first interaction with them, and the effects that he has on them and that they have on him, it's really, really cool. And that's actually my favorite part of the game. Um, in terms of the lo location, it's in Arkham... I mean, it's, it's in Gotham City. Uh, like, the northern half of the map is just, you know, it's it's pretty much all everything we saw in Arkham City. But the, the rest is like, you know, New Gotham, or... And we're seeing, you know, and you know, you've got the bridge linking the two parts, um, the Gotham's Pioneer Bridge, which is actually a real pain to go across again and again. But luckily, this time around, they've implemented fast travel, which is nice. Uh, which you get through, you know, uh, you have little uh, sort of transition loading screens of Batman flying the the uh, flying bat jet. I. <laughs> I apologize for not remembering it at this point, but uh, yeah. Uh, in terms of the gameplay, uh, it's pretty much the same, pretty much as Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Um, the fighting, the fighting feels good for the most part. Um, it, they, they've up, they sort of changed things in terms of the the counters have been sort of halved in time, meaning like you know you have half the time to react to a punch before it being punched um which does make a lot of the fights quite frustrating and seeing is so many of parts of the story and outside of the story are simply you going from point A to point B and fighting a bunch of thugs before you can actually get to the villain. So the fights actually do get frustrating, which is definitely disappointing seeing as, you know, the fights in the previous two games are so like the fighting is so great and so fluid. And it's fluid here too, but it it it's you know, you find that free flow combat is often interrupted by just uh even if you press the counter, it doesn't like register it. It's it gets pretty frustrating. Um. Uh. Yeah. But 
you know, again, the, and the story is great. Uh, it's a very uh, suspenseful story, you know. <laughs> Definitely has some twists that I did not see coming when I did, when they came. It was just, it just blew me away. Um, you have some new features, um, a couple new features. One new feature is, uh, in terms of Batman's detective mode, there's a crime reconstruction scene, which is another one of my favorite parts of the game. Uh, it's really cool. You can, you know, by examining evidence in detective mode and picking off different parts of different pieces of evidence, you can reconstruct crime scenes. And it's really cool. I mean, reconstructing explosions, someone being hit by a sniper, it's it's incredible. And you can find the things that they've dropped that you need, like key cards and such. It's very cool. Um, outside of the main story, there's a ton to do, as there usually is in Arkham games. Um, I mean, whether it's, you know, stopping a blackmailer from a blackmailer from, uh, or an extortionist, um, from, you know, uh, blackmailing a bunch of city officials, or whether it's, uh, taking down criminals' drug stashes, whether it's stop, stopping, uh, you know, uh, criminal underworld activities, I mean, there's a ton to do, you're taking down network relays, um, in order, also in order to unlock, uh, fast travel locations, um, you're, you're, uh, disabling these radio towers that allow you to do that um so and i mean and there's a ton more to do there's there's an apps there's a lot they have also a new thing that they've implemented i'm pretty sure it's new i don't remember it in arkham city or arkham asylum uh but they've implemented challenges not the challenge maps those are there too and they're great the predator maps and the combat maps are great you can and if you pre-ordered it you can play as deathstroke which deathstroke and combat maps actually feels like the the batman from arkham city and arkham asylum it's weird like it he like i rarely missed a counter with with deathstroke it's really weird but yeah th those are back and they're great but uh yeah there's uh there's challenges that you can go through in the game through the story and through just, you know, roaming the open world uh, that are, are, it's cool. They reward you for, you know, being stealthy, being, mixing up your tactics overall, whether it's mixing up your takedowns, your stealth approaches, whatever it is, mixing that up and, you know, meeting certain challenge criteria. It nets you points and it uh, allows you to upgrade weapons faster, upgrade your suit faster, all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, bear with me for one second. I have I have notes, so there's because there's so much to talk about here. Uh, I've gone through most of it. Yeah, there are some glitches. Um, there definitely it's this game is not as polished as the previous two games. Um, like graphically, it's fine. And I mean, some of the character models are kind of meh, but uh, graphically, it's it's fine. But there are more than a few glitches. Whether it's you know getting stuck on a corner, whether it's, you know, you get you using your grapple points, you know, your, with your grapple gun and, like, getting stuck or something. Uh, but, I mean, those are those are minor gripes. The, the, the major glitches, I mean, there's some frame rate issues that sort of do get really, really, really bad at times um, throughout the game, whether you're gliding or fighting or even during cutscenes sometimes. Um, and there was there's a couple really persistent glitches. I know that one was like when I was taking out uh, some of the drug stashes of one of the criminals in the in the game. It was a side quest. Um, I was taking out the drug stashes, and there's there were eight of them. And every time I got to the fourth one, like I would go to the fifth, but then it wouldn't register that I had I had gotten the fourth. So I'd have to restart that. I'd have to keep restarting it, and it was really, really irritating. Like, it took me, like, a while to do it. It was ridiculous. Um, another thing was, this glitch only happened a couple of times, but I was when I was fighting an enemy, when I was fighting a bunch of enemies, there would be, like, one enemy left standing, and he would be, so he was, before I could, like, take him down, he would be frozen in time, and that was the enemy that I needed to interrogate to get information out of, and I had to have to restart the whole fight over again. It was uh, pretty irritating. So there, there are some glitches and framework stuff here and there. Um, there's also online, which is there's uh, multiplayer. It's surprisingly limited. Like uh, you know, this is the first time that the Arkham series is as uh, brought in multiplayer, and it's you know it's not bad. It's not certainly not great. It has potential, um, and if they decide to keep it in future 
Batman games, you know, they can definitely, like, vastly improve it if they want to. Uh, but, yeah, this time around, it's... The first time around, it's uh, very... For one thing, the first thing that really just strikes me as really odd is that there's only one online mode. There's only one. So there's no, you know, there's not different modes that you can transition through and try different things. Uh, the online, it's pretty simple. I mean... There's there's two teams. You're either Bane's gang or Joker's gang, and then two randomly selected players play as Batman and Robin, who t who take out who are trying to take out each one of those criminals. Uh, and you know the each criminal group, if they you know get enough points, um, they can they can let literally let uh, either Joker or Bane, depending on which gang you're in, um, into the map, and you know Joker. Um, Joker and Bane are both very, very powerful. Really hard to kill. Really powerful weapons. Yeah, but uh, you know, and you know, playing as the heroes, you're taking down people, trying to be as stealthy as possible. Um, so you know that dynamic of you know, it, it, it's actually really well balanced. Um, it's just that uh, it's very limited, and at playing as a gang member, fighting just the other gang members is pretty boring just standard stuff you're just shooting here and there just kind of spraying and praying there's a cover system in it but it you really don't need it and no i didn't see anyone using it so you know there's a potential there if they decide to to, to uh keep it in but uh again i could take it or leave it uh, a couple more things again bear with me uh yeah there's new gadgets there's of course uh oh of course, the voice acting is really good. Uh, you don't have uh, Kevin Conroy or Mark Hamill back. Mark Hamill, especially, seeing as he retired from being the Joker. But you have uh, their replacements uh, for this game. Roger Craig Smith is Batman, and uh, Troy Baker is Joker, and they're both incredible. Uh, very, very <laughs> good. And based on you know the. the based on the two characters and their actions, I mean, it's really well acted really really well acted uh couple more yeah there's some audio discrepancies here and there i noticed that every time uh you're transitioning from fast fa fast travel point and you're in the you're in the jet and you get ejected out like i noticed every time i got into the jet to fast travel every time i you know was launched out to get to my destination there would constantly be this audio discrepancy where the sound would fall behind of the actual animation. Uh, not a big deal, but it was there constantly. Um, another thing is that uh, in this one you don't have, you know, the classic Scarecrow sequence from Asylum or the Ra's al Ghul sequence in City, which I know I'm one of the few who actually likes the Ra's al Ghul one better. But you don't have those sequences in here. But you do still have, there's a lot of, there's a lot of villains in this game, and you still do have a lot of um, different, very trippy, surreal, uh, sort of either toxin-induced or uh, mind control induced, induced sequences that that uh, they don't exactly measure up to those two predecessing to those two predecessors of uh, you know Razogul and Scarecrow, but they're still very very cool this very cool sequences except for one sequence the first one the first sort of surreal trippy sequence that you experience which is surprisingly underwhelming but the rest are really good uh yeah uh a couple more things i think uh bear with me <laughs> uh oh you know what i think that that is it. I think that's it. So yeah, that is Batman Arkham Origins. Um, would have written it again, but I just did not have enough time this week. So that that is Batman Arkham Origins. I played it on the PS3. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. It's a good game. N not great, but definitely good and definitely worth the money. Definitely worth the time. There's tons to do. Like I spent twenty odd hours in it, and I still have not finished the plethora of side missions and case files there are to explore and uh yeah there's there's a ton to do it's a good game definitely worth playing for all batman fans and dc fans alike uh yeah absolutely so uh i'll see you guys later